Becoming a doctor is tough. And yes, the older generation had longer hours, there's no denying it. But the pace of hospital life was much slower. Patients would stay in hospital for days, if not weeks on end, waiting for scans or treatments. Compare that to today where you can request and get a scan done on the same day. The turnover of patients in hospital is so quick and it can be so overwhelming as a junior doctor to keep up with all of that. But we do have one advantage at least, apps. If there's one thing I've learned as a junior doctor, it's that it's not about what you know, but if you know how to find out. You will 100% be faced with a situation where you don't have the answer. Focus on knowing your sources. The knowledge will come with time, practice, and experience. So without further ado, these are my top nine apps that have saved me time and time again working as a doctor. Some of these you probably already know about, but they're absolute basics you need to have. And then others I've discovered along the way and have found really, really helpful uh, throughout my rotations. Okay, so let's start with the BNF, which is possibly the most important app that you need on your phone. If you can't find something about medications on here, it means you don't know how to search for it, whether that be side effects, uh, indications, interactions, the dose of medications, how to administer them. So you can search by uh, typing in the medication you want to give, so like metronidazole, metro and here you can see there's a list of things about this medication you don't need to look through all of them but it is quite extensive so in indications you'll have the dosage by the type of indication and uh, the age of the patient so for adults it's 400 milligrams every eight hours um, you can go to side effects in case your patient asks about them what i find even more useful on this app is actually the let me close this the summaries section. So here you can go to literally any section. So let's go to respiratory, uh, asthma, acute, and it tells you about the condition. It tells you um, how to manage it. So you'll get the general approach as well as a list of medications that you need to give. And you can just click on these and they then give you uh, like the initial page we were on the in the indications, the dosage. We'll do another one so we can go to gastrointestinal system and where are we? Peptic ulcer disease. And again, you've got description, initial management. And here it will tell you drugs that can induce ulcers and then the treatment that you want to start and the follow up. So it's very, very extensive actually. So this is an app that you absolutely must have on your phone. The next app is called Induction, and this is a great app to stay connected to everyone in hospital. So at the top, you can pick the hospital that you're in, and you can pick any hospital to try this out, and go to the directory, and you will find all the switchboard numbers of everything that you would need to contact, everything or everyone that you would need to contact in the hospital. You can search things like on call, so you'll get the Encore Pharmacy, the Orthopaedic SHO, um, lots of different ones, Medical F1 on call. And yeah, it's, it's just really helpful because a lot of the time you won't have bleep numbers stuck on a wall in front of you in the hospital, you'll be running around. And this is a really great way to have them at hand. So it's a really simple app. You probably only need to use directory, but it's a lifesaver. So that's my number two. The next app is going to be Microguide. This again is a great app for prescribing. So if you go to the main menu, go down to body systems, and I'll just show you exactly what I mean. Respiratory, let's say pneumonia, you do your curb score and it's a curb score of two, and it tells you exactly everything that you need to prescribe. So duration of five days, first line amoxicillin, if they're pen allergic, what you can give them, and then oftentimes there's also step down advice. This app is great because it's specific to your trust and hospital. So the advice in terms of uh, antibiotic prescriptions are gonna be most accurate to yours. And it's great because it has a directory of um, every type of body system. So you can go to skin, cellulitis, severe, and again, it tells you exactly what to do. And then for specific antibiotics that have more complicated prescribing, they give you actual guidelines so that you can work it out. And finally, you even have a section for, where is it? For sepsis. So community acquired sepsis, and it tells you what to do. So it gives you advice on taking blood cultures before antibiotics. 
uh, gentamicin, etc. Again, you can click on gentamicin and have advice. So yeah, this is an all round essential app for you to have. Now that we've gone through the basic essential apps, I want to go through some of my favorites um, that you may not know about. So the first one is called Pocket Doctor. And this has been so helpful uh, during my on calls because they have essentially everything you need when you're starting out. The first section that's really helpful is called News Call. And on here, they've got all sorts of things that you can be called about. So if we click on low blood pressure, for example, you'll see there is a whole checklist of things you should consider um, while you're assessing a patient who has hypertension. It's not an extensive list and this is not gonna replace uh, a doctor but it's really helpful when you're starting out, when you're really stressed, and also just to make sure that you've not missed anything basic. Um, so here you can see making sure that oxygen levels are over 95% and you can tick it as soon as you've done it. So that's really helpful as well if you are a bit of a scatterbrain. Um, and then if you go down, you'll also see that there are differential diagnoses and the blue ones you can click on and here they'll tell you more about the condition, how to diagnose it, and again, um, management and initial investigations to do, and extra things to consider. So it's a really, really helpful app. Now there are some other things. So there are plans. Here you've got lots of different common conditions you'll see in the hospital. So seizures, and again, it'll tell you what to do. And if you click on the blue things, let me click there, it will give you the actual dose of the medication that you need to give, common causes of a seizure, so things you need to think about. So this is a really good starting uh, step for both doctors and also medical students who want to get more involved in day-to-day -day ward work. And there's more. So there's a really nice prescribing section. You'll have lots of really common medication that you'll prescribe day-to-day um, and it's it's a helpful thing to look at. I know we've talked about the BNF, which is much more thorough, but this gives you the basic things that you need to know about each of these sections. So antiemetics, electrolyte replacements, um, and even if you know how to prescribe them, sometimes it's helpful to double check with something and just make sure that you're prescribing it correctly. So I found this section really useful as well. And last but not least, we have a section on ECGs. Now this is amazing because um, a lot of medical students may not have had the best teaching for with regards to ECGs or may have a basic understanding but aren't fully confident on picking up certain things. And here you can see that they will show you what an ECG looks like for different common presentations. So AF for example, it will show you what, it, what the strip looks like and then go through the rhythm, the rates, essentially how to pick it up on an ECG. So it's excellent for teaching. Um, and it's also really helpful when you're looking at an ECG on the ward and you're not exactly sure, but you think it might be um, atrial flutter, for example, you can always cross check with this, go through the criteria and make sure that it fits. And all these apps that I mentioned, and this one in particular, it's really helpful on the job during your on calls, but also if you're sitting down, you've got a free moment and you want to do a bit of teaching by yourself or even teach a medical student. Um, there's just so many things that you can revise on here and it's practical knowledge that you will use day to day on the wards. So that's this app, which I definitely recommend. The next app that I want to talk about, you could argue is actually an essential app and should be with the other four that I've mentioned. And this is the MD Calc. Now here you've got all sorts of scoring systems that we use to stratify um, risk. So for example, a Chad score for patients with AF to decide whether we need to anticoagulate them. So all you do is search Chad Oh, there we are, Chad Vask. Clicked on the wrong one. Here we are, Chad Vask score, and it's really easy to fill out, so you just fill these boxes in, and it will give you the results. I'm just gonna make this patient very high risk. And then if you click on the results, it will tell you what the patient's risk is, and will give you recommendations as well. So you click on next. And here it tells you what the critical next steps are. You can also search for different conditions. So let's say DVT, and it will show you the different types of scoring systems you can use. So I also use this for creatinine clearance. That's something that you'll need to calculate often. And you can even calculate fluid balance on this. The next app is called iRecess. And this is a very, very basic app, uh, which I use mostly again in ED, so the emergency department but I think is useful for on calls as well. So essentially it goes over ALS and BLS, um, things that you would have training for in medical school and then afterwards in your F1 and F2. 
Um, so if we go to advanced life support, it's a really nice layout. You can go through the boxes and once you assess the rhythm, if it's a shockable VF, you click on the arrow and it tells you what to do. And you can go back to the overview. So this you would have seen in some of your textbooks. Um, and it's just a nice reminder. And if you go to drugs as well, it gives you the doses. So I think this is a good setup uh, on a very simple app for when you need a quick recap or you want to double check doses and you don't want to go start Googling or check the BNF at every single dose. I think it's worth having just to make sure that you've got the basics. And then once you've checked it over and over again and you know it off the top of your head, you can delete this app. But I think it's when you're starting off, it's helpful to have. The next app that I want to talk about, uh, you probably know from the website and that is the BMJ Best Practice. I have found this app really, really useful just to go over a revision. Now, I haven't actually used this on my own course or anything like that. It's something that has more extensive information and you would want to be sat down reading through it. Um, but if you do have some time and you probably will have days where you've got 10 minutes here, half an hour there to just sit down and do some revision. And this is a really great app for that. So if you go to specialties, it's very nicely organized into different sections. So you can decide to review, let's say orthopedics uh, on a particular day, ankle fractures, and it's got a really nice summary that you can go through, see if see how much you know of the topic, and then you can go through to the more specific sections, so management, and it's a very nice organized approach um, to your revision. So I think it's a really nice app to have, and this would be my go-to when I do have some free time. You can search for specific things, or you can just look down the list of specialties, and there really is everything. So let's go to nephrology acute kidney injury you're going to see lots of those and again you can go through to management diagnoses it is very thorough so you decide how deep you want to go we're getting to the end now and we've talked about the absolute basic apps that you need on your phone as well as some of my personal favorites there are hundreds if not thousands of medical apps that you can find and at the end of the day a lot of them are quite similar it just comes down to what kind of layout you prefer and what works for you so this is one that works for me medical flash notes um, this is again a really neat simple app where you can do basic revision or that can help you on your own course so if I go straight to let's say uh, respiratory medicine asthma gives me a good quick background you can use this for teaching as well uh, what presentation there is so even if you're in ED for example and you need to clock a patient it's helpful to quickly go through this page just to see the kind of questions you want to ask about the presentation um, and the type of investigations that you want to do. So this is a nice option for you if you don't have all your notes digitalized and you want a quick, um, easy access on your phone. So there you have it. These are the top apps that I use day in and day out working as a doctor. If you happen to have some apps that you find really helpful, please post them in the comments down below so that we can all benefit from it. I hope some of these at least will benefit you. And if you have any questions at all, post in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.